Hello folks, welcome to another Darktable Landscapes video. In this one we're looking at how to create a panorama image using Darktable and Hugin, or Hugin, however you want to pronounce that. Um, it's a slightly different process from something like Lightroom where everything's just in one app. Um, in Darktable you need to process in Darktable, output in a lossless format, and then Hugin will do the panorama stitching for you. Uh, but of course it's entirely free, as opposed to Lightroom costing a fair amount of money. Um, so I'm in the light table view at the moment. And incidentally, if you'd like a video or two on how to use the light table view collections and that kind of thing, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Uh, so I'm in the light table view and, I'm, and I've, I've got my panorama set of images here. And before we go on to the processing, it's worth just touching on how to create a good set of panorama images. So the first rule is to use manual exposure. Uh, the reason you want to do that is you want the same exposure for every frame of your panorama. Otherwise you will get strange banding effects where one frame is lighter or darker than the other and you end up with kind of a stripy panorama. So use manual to fix the uh, exposure of your shot and you'll get a more consistent result. The other option of course is to use auto exposure lock if you're more comfortable using that uh, than manual exposure. But either way, you need to ensure your exposure is the same across all your frames of the pano. So the next rule to create a good panorama is to pivot around the correct point. We tend to either turn at the waist or if our camera's on a normal tripod, uh, just turn the camera around the tripod mounting point, around the body of the camera, if you like. But this can, in fact, introduce quite a lot of distortion. The optimal place to pivot around is, in fact, what's called the nodal point of the lens which is, for all intents and purposes, the front of the lens, where the, where the aperture resides. And if you can pivot around that point, around the front of the lens, instead of around the body itself, you'll find you get less distortion. You, you can, in fact, buy specialised panorama heads that will position the camera so that the, that rotation point is in the right place. But you can do it handheld, and in the shots I'm going to use for this video, I did that. I just handheld it and pivoted around the front of the lens. So with all that said, we're back in light table and we've got our panos, our pano images. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a kind of a representative sample. The exposure is obviously even across the whole thing because we've used manual exposure. So let's go for this one here and we'll see what we can do. So I'm just going to do a, a basic edit here. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail, uh, just getting it set up to look better than it does now. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, white balance, very blue, that's good. Can see our histogram is quite squeezed so we can go into sigmoid use contrast to spread those values out maybe a little touch of skew and let's do color balance rgb vibrance is pretty good it was kind of pre-sunset we're getting into the golden hour certainly so some nice uh, strong sunlight already i'll maybe just do a little bit of stepped perceptual saturation grading Shadows, mm, pretty good already. Highlights, likewise, pretty good. Maybe boost the mids a little bit just to give it some glow. It's fine. In fact, I may even reduce global chroma. Uh, I might also go into RGB primaries, do a little color grading. And sort that out like that. Subtle change, but does the job. Do some clarity and texture, so contrast equalizer. Roll our mouse wheel down. Up. Right click to duplicate. And if you'd like to know these kind of steps in more detail, I do this in pretty much every other video I've done. So do check them out as well if you're kind of confused as to what I'm doing here. Okay. Now I'll just do some sharpening, so uh, diffuse and sharpen. No AA filter preset here. There it goes, so that looks pretty sharp. Fine. And then maybe also while I'm here, a lens correction. We won't quite know what it is because it was a slightly older Tamron lens, so let's choose the one I want. 
one. Okay, let's fix some distortion. And that's pretty much it. And now we can just hit the L key again to go back to the Lightroom view, the light table view, sorry. Uh, slip of the tongue. So now you can see this one is obviously our edited image, much more contrast. Now all we need to do to apply this to all the others is to go over to our sidebar here where it says history stack and uh, click copy and then highlight all the rest. So in fact, what we can do is go to selection here and go to invert selection. So it selects everything else and paste. And you'll see it will go through, and apply all those edits in one fell swoop. Okay, so now what we need to do is export these images. So uh, we're here on the export tab. I've chosen a path where they're going to be exported. And I'm going to change my file format from JPEG, which is lossy, will lose quality, in other words, when it's saved, to TIFF, which is lossless. And I'll set a size um, because obviously with this many images, it's going to be a huge image at the end. Uh, so we'll go for, let's say, 1500 pixels wide. So each image will be 1500 pixels. And then we will click export. I just open up this other tab here, see that it will show us exporting along. So I'll just fast forward using the magic of film. Okay, so the export's finished. So here's our finished set of images ready to stitch. So now we'll go into uh, Huggin and stitch them together. Okay, so this is the default view in Huggin. Uh, these days it has a nice kind of assistant mode that more or less walks you through the whole uh, process. So the first step is to load in the images. So we'll hop in here. It's already in the folder I want, so I can just select all the images and click open. And you can see it loads them in a rough order, but not quite right. So now we will click line. It will go away and find the overlaps between the different photos and use them to position the images correctly. And there we go. So it's also chosen the best crop uh, to remove areas where the camera has moved up or down in this case. And so we've aligned and now all we need to do is click create panorama. And so here we've got the size and file format that we're using. So it's going to be a big file, 29,000 odd pixels. We'll be saving as a TIFF again, so lossless again. We're just using the basic exposure corrected low dynamic range. And you can see that there are options here if you did HDR panos, so a bracket for each shot. You can even do that as well with Huggin. Uh, so, but for now we're just using the basic option because we just took one shot per frame and we'll click OK and let it rattle through. So it's going to ask us to save the, the project file first and then ask us what we want to call our output. So let's call this a stitched pano. Off it goes. Okay, and so once that's finished, you're left with file stitched together. So in this case, stitched pano.tiff, and then you can do with that what you will. So uh, you may want to take it into a pixel image editor like Photoshop, Affinity Photo, uh, GIMP, uh, and then you can finalize things off. So I'll take this one into GIMP, add a frame and do some final sharpening, uh, and then that'll be ready to go. So here's the file in GIMP. And the first thing I'll do is I will sharpen it up. So let's just zoom in a little bit, say 25%, so we can see what we're doing. And a pretty good technique for sharpening any landscape shot is just use a high pass filter. So I'll duplicate this layer and I will go to filters and enhance and high pass. And the basic settings are just about fine, I think. That'll work away. See a lot of pixels to work with here on this big image. And then finally change the blend mode layer to uh, overlay. Maybe drop the opacity down a touch if it looks a little crispy. But you can see that that's sharpened things up. So now we can add a frame. So maybe we can do that is first of all, I'll merge these down. So go into one layer again. And then we can do image, canvas size, or we'll change this to uh, centimeters. Let's say we want a two centimeter border around image we'll change that to 504 height to 45 click 
the center button, resize, and then we've got a transparency behind it. So we'll just pop on a new layer fill with white. Just drag that below. And then we've got our image with a frame. So there we go, that's the finished image. I hope you like this video. It's uh, obviously a slightly different one to my normal entirely dark table focused uh, stuff. Uh, but all the software I've used here is free. GIMP is free, Ugin's free, and Darktable is of course free. So there's no reason you can't uh, hop out there in the field, take some panos. It's generally a much better approach than using a wide angle lens, which tends to shrink things. So if you have a really big expansive view, do a pano instead, uh, and then use these three bits of software to uh, create your final image. For now, please do like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.